Hi, everyone. Carl Valeri with Aviation Careers Podcast, and we're going to talk about the top 10 questions about your FA medical. Today, joining me, as has in the past with other videos, is an aviation attorney, Chris Pazala from the law offices of Strumer Law. Hey, Chris, great to have you on again. Hey, Carl. Thank you for having me. You know, I I can't wait to dive into this. These are those common questions people come up with about the medical, and that's why we're doing this video. By the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe. And if you have any questions in the comments below, you can ask them also feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Please thumbs up, thumbs down if you like these type of videos or not. It allows us to figure out what we need to do in the future with videos. So let's get into this. Uh, So here are the top 10 questions we're going to ask our aviation attorney here, Chris Pazala. Uh, But before we start, I want to ask you, you know, first of all, where can we find you while we're going through these questions and uh, and where do you practice law? Uh, Certainly, Carl. So I practice law in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, my law partner, uh, Robert Strumer or Bob Strumer, is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So we cover both states, and for um, FAA matters, uh, we also work in other states as well because those are uh, federal matters. And so an attorney uh, does not have to be state specific for those. So uh, we're doing a lot of aviation law, uh, particularly with FAA medicals. That seems to be the bulk of what we're doing right now. And uh, we can be found, of course, at StrumerLaw.com. Uh, And also, uh, we'll provide our contact information for our Daytona Beach office, which handles uh, most of the medical cases. Uh, Good point. Hey, uh, streamerlaw.com, you can go in the show notes down below to find all that. Everything else is in the show notes. By the way, whatever we talk about, you don't have to write down. It's all in the show notes, so just listen to what we're talking about. So let's get into number one uh, as far as the top ten questions about your FA medical. First of all, how does it work, Chris? So the FAA medical process... Uh, before I get too far in, the law firm wants me to just mention, of course, that um, I can't comment on anybody's specific case um, here in an interview, but uh, if you have specific questions, make sure you reach out to myself or an aeromedical examiner. We can certainly help you with questions. Uh, that being said, the process, um, speaking of aeromedical examiners, uh, typically revolves around the medical examiner, who is usually a doctor or somebody with medical training who is certified to provide uh, medicals for the FAA. A lot of these folks actually do it for other entities as well, uh, trucking and shipping, uh, a lot of Coast Guard medicals. Uh, But anyways, uh, these folks who do the FAA medicals uh, will do a physical evaluation. They'll review your application, which we'll talk about in a bit, and then they submit that to the FAA. So the examiners, depending on your uh, medical application, may be able to approve your medical in the office. Uh, And in other cases, that medical... uh, information gets forwarded to Oklahoma City where the FAA's uh, headquarters can uh, review it and make a decision on whether or not they want to certify the pilot. Um, A lot of people don't realize though is that even if your FAA medical examiner issues a medical, uh, Oklahoma City is allowed to second guess that. So they're issuing on behalf of Oklahoma, but that's not always going to be final. So it's important that you have all the documentation that's requested, especially if you've had a condition, so that if Oklahoma does review the file, they can see that, that it was proper to issue that medical. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so the next question that usually comes into us is, uh, so you've mentioned how it goes about, but who, number two, who decides if I get a medical? Uh, so the ultimate decision is uh, CAMI, the Civil Aviation Medical uh, Institute, and that is going to be in Oklahoma City. So that's going to be the FAA's medical branch. And they're going to decide uh, which uh, individuals, which applicants are going to be eligible for a medical. And uh, so, again, the examiner can issue a medical uh, based on the application, but that's all going to get reviewed uh, back in Oklahoma. Interesting. So uh, so that's actually who really decides uh, if you get your medical. But uh, there's, uh, so there's this process. And speaking of process, our number three question that comes in is uh, what is MedExpress? So MedExpress, uh, for those of you who haven't done a medical in the last few years, the MedExpress is the online application. It's the digital version of what used to be the Forum 8500. The MedExpress uh, basically walks you through the application, and then at the end it'll give you a reference number, and you definitely want to write down that reference number or print it so that uh, your AME can pull up your file. So it, it digitalizes the process. That's the good news. The bad news is that in the process, they created a number of descriptions on how to fill out the form, and what they placed does not match 
the regular instructions that would have come with the form. And so uh, AOPA, the Aircraft Owners Pilots Association, has made a number of complaints to the FAA about uh, this information that does not align. Uh, the short version is, though, the MedExpress form uh, descriptions are not as accurate as they need to be. So if you have any questions about filling out the MedExpress form, talk to an aviation attorney or an AME before you finish that form, uh, because we have some other resources that we can look at that help with that. Is there uh, something online maybe they can go to for MedExpress? Uh, um, uh, so uh, the MedExpress itself, of course, is online, so I think it's, uh, I'll have to look at the website. So, so what we'll do is we'll get the link and we'll put it down here in the show notes for, uh, for what MedExpress is. Uh, so we'll actually add that to the show notes. Uh, so that was what is MedExpress. And there's, uh, like you said, there's a, a little bit more work to be done, really, on MedExpress to, to actually make it uh, 100%. And I'm glad AOPA is behind that. And they have some articles there, too, that we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll put in, in the show notes down below. Anyway, moving on to number four. Uh, number four is, should I put down all of my conditions? Right. So uh, this is going to be uh, everyone's favorite box, box 18, which is actually multiple boxes. And the question 18 asks about conditions. Uh, there's a certain amount of reasonableness that goes uh, with this. But the short version is uh, you should consult with the AME about any conditions you have or have had and make sure that you are filling out that form accurately. Uh, I recommend the pilots to err on the side of including information and not excluding it because we don't want the FAA to come back later and say that you excluded something. Uh, it'd be better to discuss things openly. But before you put anything on a form, you know, again, you want to talk with the AME uh, about that specific condition and also know what kind of uh, information you may need to bring with you, such as uh, doctor reports or other things, and that's going to uh, help fill out that process. So number five is, uh, what if the condition gets better? Uh, so I get this question a lot. And the box says, do you have or have you ever had? And so the short version is, you're still going to need to include that. Uh, in the, the notes section that goes with the MedExpress, you can fill out that the condition's been resolved and just put the dates and, uh, or relevant years that maybe that was an issue. Uh, but if, it's, if you've ever had a condition, they want to know about that. And uh, one of the things that's really important is keeping records. Whether you've filed something, whether you haven't, uh, if you, anytime you go to a doctor or have a medical um, procedure, keep records, keep everything. Whether you keep it on, in a folder on the shelf, whether you scan it to a computer like I do, you got to keep that because we've had clients who have reported something to the FAA and not had any issues for two, three, ten plus years. And suddenly the FAA comes back and goes, you know, we really want to ask more questions about this thing from 13 years ago. And now we're calling hospitals and filling out information requests, and that information is not always there. So even if you don't think things are relevant, just save everything. Just take a big folder and save it all. You know, through our career coaching that we have, uh, one of the things I always tell people is try to put one of those online folders together in a Dropbox or whatever and just keep scan all this information because a lot of it does come up later. Uh, and remember, you're, of course, going to go through a 10-year background check. Think about that as a lifetime background check on your medical. It's always good to hang on to that stuff because uh, in working with people, yeah, they do review that. That's for sure. Uh, so let's, uh, another thing, moving on to number six, that's somewhat similar to this question is, what are the rules for medications? Right, so the medications section is a little different because it doesn't ask have you ever, it asks uh, what you are currently on. Those medications are going to include anything prescription, of course, it's also going to include over-the-counter. So if you're using Advil or anything on a regular basis, they want to know about it. Uh, one, they want to make sure the medication doesn't present issues but also they want to know about any conditions that would require that medication. Interesting. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, too, they ask about what I can take, and there's a, a link, and we'll put in the show notes as far as certain uh, types of medications you can take. But, of course, you have to, you know, talk to your aviation medical examiner. Uh, let's move on to the seventh one. Uh, first of all, what are CBD products, and are they okay for my medical? Right, so uh, CBD products um, is basically a derivative of cannabis. It's a relative to marijuana, which uh, many folks are familiar with. Uh, many folks in their younger years do some uh, wonderful experimentation and exploring. 
uh, of marijuana. CBD does not have the same THC, or at least it should not include the same THC, uh, which is the hallucinogenic uh, compound from the cannabis plant. Uh, so CBD oil uh, became legal under the Farm Act a couple of years ago. Congress made that legal. And so now um, it can be produced and can be sold. Uh, a lot of folks uh, like to use it for uh, arthritis or uh, other conditions. I even know one person who's giving it to their dog that they think it helps. It's an older dog that seems to think it helps. But uh, the issue we're having, at least for humans, is that the CBD products are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. They are not regulated like food. They're not regulated like any medication. There is no way to know that that product you bought on the shelf is even CBD oil, let alone whether it was processed properly. And one of the big issues is if you don't process it properly, the THC, uh, the hallucinogenic, can find its way into the CBD oil. And that is always a possibility on a drug test. So um, I never recommend CBD to pilots. Uh, if you have a condition that you think you need CBD, you should be seeing a medical uh, professional and, and get some advice from them. Uh, the other issue we have is that the FAA does not approve um, CBD for any uh, type of treatment. If you have a condition that requires CBD, the FAA does not feel that you are medically fit to fly. Uh, they put this into one of the uh, flight surgeon's uh, quarterly reports a couple of years ago. And... Um, I would not include that in the medical list, and I would not use CBD as a pilot. Uh, you know, if, and like I said, if you have a condition, go see a doctor and get some other prescription. Yeah, that's some, some great advice. So moving on to number eight, similar to what I said about certain conditions you don't have to put down, like if you have poison ivy, et cetera, uh, yeah. what, <laughs> what should I list for medical visits? Should, we, should I just list everything? Right, so that could be um, that could be quite a bit, uh, especially for as we get older. Uh, so that what they want to see are any visit to a physician, uh, any surgeries, any visits to the emergency room. You would include that. Uh, the guidance they provide the AMEs says you don't need to include regular doctor appointment, dentist appointment, or the AME uh, medical itself. Uh, they don't say about other things like uh, getting your annual flu shot. Uh, but I, since that's a routine, I don't usually include the flu shot. Uh, but anything abnormal uh, or anytime you're being checked for condition or have a condition, that's a time that you want to make sure that that's included on the form. Um, I'm working with a client right now that uh, went through a medical uh, condition a few years ago. We're finally at the point where he's going to reapply for his medical. And he had so many doctor appointments that MedExpress actually ran out of space on the form. So, so apparently there is a limit. Wow. How many you can fill the form, so we had to submit an additional uh, page with that. Yeah, and if, if that happens, uh, just put it all on, on a separate sheet of paper, take your AME and, and get that submitted with your uh, application. But uh, yeah, you don't only need to include things that are going to be um, abnormal. So again, the dentist appointment, you got your new dentures, that doesn't need to go in there. So next thing, number nine, is, does MedExpress save my information? So uh, the answer is no. Unfortunately, MedExpress, uh, when you open up MedExpress, it will pre-populate your basic information, your name, your address, your phone number, uh, you know, the color of your dog's fur. Just kidding. But uh, it, it includes a lot of basic information. But what it will not include is anything involving your medical history. Uh, MedExpress, uh, if they did that, would have to comply with a number of uh, HIPAA laws. A lot of uh, privacy laws related to your, your medical uh, documents. They don't want to be responsible for that. So uh, every time you fill out the application, it collects that information and stores it just long enough to transmit it, and then it's gone. And where this becomes an issue is when you go to fill out your form next year, you might remember that you had high blood pressure and check it, but you may not remember every doctor appointment that you had. And of course, they look back three years. So if you're a professional pilot who goes every year or every six months for a new medical, you're going to be putting those things on the forms four, five, six times, maybe more. So you need to, uh, when you do the Med Express, make sure you print out the application, the whole application, and keep a copy for next year. Or I actually save it to PDF and just save it to the computer. But you need to save a copy of this year's medical. So when you do it next year, you don't have to go find all that information again. You can just pull up last year's and go, okay, these doctor appointments are still within three years, and put them on the form. Interesting. So, so again, keeping records is very important. 
So Chris, let's move on to number 10. Uh, and this is a really, really important one. I get this one a lot is, what if I forget something on my medical? Right, so this question we get to, uh, folks omitted something either intentionally or unintentionally, or sometimes we get a call, somebody found something from their childhood that they didn't even know as an adult until it came up somehow. If the information is not included at the time you file your medical application, technically that a fraud has been committed, and that, that is technically a federal offense. Uh, that being said, the question now is, okay, we, we've ha made a mistake, it's an issue. Do we fix it? How do we fix it? And that is very case specific. So that again is where you're going to want to go to your AME or your attorney and work out how you're going to resolve that. The FAA will always be glad to collect additional information, but technically you've already, uh, you've already committed the fraud at, at that point, even if it was unintentional. Uh, so that's why it's really important before you submit any kind of corrections that you get uh, somebody to look over it and work with you. Yeah, great advice. There's lots of different ways you can do that. The best way, of course, is to ask Chris Bazala here at uh, Strumer Law. Uh, to find them at strumerlaw.com. We'll have all the links down here in the show notes. Hey, Chris, I really appreciate your coming here today, and uh, we'll probably hit you up for some more questions. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of questions from the audience. Fantastic. Thank you, Carl. Well, if you do have questions, don't forget in the comments, you can uh, leave those. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like these type of uh, videos. If you're listening over the podcast, don't forget to go to aviationcareerspodcast.com slash YouTube. Uh, so the one thing that's really important about this is to go through, you know, what question you may have about medicals and review what you've been doing. That's my, my challenge to you today is go through these top 10 lists and review what you're doing on your medical uh, maybe there's something you can make more efficient. Uh, if you've been worried about something, you can ask an aviation attorney just like Chris Pazala here at Strumer Law. Well, I really appreciate your listening and, uh, and watching this video, but most importantly, I want you to do something. I want you to take one step today to move forward in your flying career and your flying life. And it could be something simple like watching this video or listening to podcasts or researching some of the things down here in the show notes. Well, we'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there. 